Hello everyone. Today's book is about a haunted house, but it's much more than just about the ghosts. And I think you're going to love the creamy atmosphere and all the goings on, going ons <laughs> in this house. And if you might notice, this is different than my normal videos. I decided to use some background video because my microphone broke and well, we're just going to have to deal with that as it goes along. <clears throat> but this book is fantastic. You're going to love it, I think. And we're going to talk about all that right now. So our book today is called A House of Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. Now, a lot of people have recommended other books of hers to me. And... I want you to know I have them in my, in my TBR, <clears throat> but this one just released, I believe, on March 28th, so it's a very recent book, and when I had the chance to read it on NetGalley, I decided to just dive in at that point, <laughs> if that makes sense. I had it in there. I'll read this one first. Uh, the first thing I want to say about it is that the main character is an entomologist, which I personally love. I've always loved bugs and insects. I took a couple courses online uh, of entomology, and I've always been fascinated by their little critter lives. Uh, but she is an entomologist. And one day her brother calls her out of the blue and says, Hey, m our mother, uh, something's strange going on with her. Now this is nothing new, and this book will delve into the family dysfunction as it goes along. <clears throat> but our main character, uh, the daughter, she decides, You know what, I have a few days off, I'll go see mom, find out what's happening. And when she gets there, she realizes it's a little bit worse than even what her brother had told her. Her mom was always one for everything being the same. The same furniture, the same decor, the same pictures on the wall, the same everything inside of her house. But now when she gets there, the walls are painted a nice bright color. Things are a little different. And her mother is being a bit cryptic. She talks about seeing things and hearing things, and to her daughter, this all sounds like uh, the ramblings of a woman who might be in the throes of dementia, <laughs> perhaps early dementia. But other things start to happen that reinforces the fact that perhaps... It's not dementia. For instance, her mother is now seems to be a gardener. Because out back in the backyard, her mother has a luscious garden full of different types of roses, different colors. They're all blooming. They're all luscious. It's very beautiful. And that's not like her mother at all. Also, circling over head of her mother's house are vultures. Vultures are seem to be particularly interested in just her house for some reason. Which leads her to believe, of course, that maybe it's not just a mental breakdown. Maybe there's something more nefarious going on. <clears throat> um... One day, while she's digging around in the rose garden, she finds something that would send anybody screaming for help buried in, uh, underneath one of the rose bushes. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. You'll have to read it to find out. And eventually, she enlists the help of a neighbor, a neighbor woman, who is a friend slash rival of her mother's. 
and the information this woman has to offer is kind of hard for her to swallow because she's a science you know she's an entomologist so she's more scientifically minded and she doesn't quite believe what this woman is saying but the woman is still willing to help her out and try to figure out what is happening with her mother all of this time and one thing I really love about this book is that it's not a horror comedy. There's really no huge comedic element to it. But there are sections of this book that made me laugh because of the characters' reactions to the situations that are going on, to the, to the things that are happening, especially in the mind of our main protagonist. And she realizes that the bugs and insects that are in the her mother's garden or perhaps not in her mother's garden when they should be are not acting the way they should and uh, there are just some very good reactions to that that made me laugh out loud but trust me this is not a comedy in any sense of the word for every moment of levity in the book there's something else that's going to creep you out uh, freak you out and ha have you maybe calling for your mother if she's not like the mother in this book of course uh, but this is a, a fantastic book it's about a haunted house but there are things that happen in this house that you wouldn't associate with that kind of subgenre and then there are some things that come up especially near the end when we start putting all the clues together and all the pieces together that really excel it to the next level the writing style in this book is fantastic it flows the the, the narrative is so easygoing and so well paced that you'll be into it from page one and you won't want to be able to put it down it's just it's just one of those books I think you have to read it might take you, you know, two or three days to get through it. Depending on your reading speed and all that good stuff. But uh, definitely worth it. You'll be interested. You'll be engaged. I loved it. I highly, highly recommend it. A House of Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. I will leave a link down below to Amazon if you want to purchase it for yourself. And as always, I want to say thank you for taking some of your time, spending it here with me. I really appreciate you guys watching. And until we meet again, keep reading spooky, my friends.